Hello everyone, and welcome to my pitiful start to this season. I'm still in iron armor, and I've still got an absolute mess out the front here. But not after a great start. I, I really want to get geared up today, and I want to take care of this. And I've been thinking, how do I deal with that creeper? Well, maybe we should just make a boat and shoot it. The thing is, I've only got literally one arrow. But because we've been working with the villagers... We now have infinity books available to us, so uh, going to have an infinity bow to defend myself with. And as you might have seen, I've got some diamonds. What One of the recurring things people keep talking about this, this season and this update is that diamonds seem to be harder to come by, and I've been at it for hours down there, and this is all I've got, like 16 diamond ore, so we're going to have to break that down and see what we can make out of that. Hopefully, we can get ourselves some diamond armor and maybe a diamond sword as well. So, let's F3B this thing. Right, I'm aiming right over at the right side. Don't get angry, buddy. Do not get angry. See, look, that's literally the first shot I've taken this season in the third episode. I think we're going to be fine. I don't think the creeper even sees me. Oh, look at that. That is wonderful because this means that I can now walk over to this place. Look! I haven't even decorated the interiors. I wanted to move my chests inside and I was just worried about that creeper. So first thing we'll do today, we'll get these chests moved inside and get a proper storage area going. And that, my friends, is what I've managed to do. It has taken some time, a lot of trial and error, but inside of here it looks fantastic. However, not the top part. I'm talking about the part down the bottom. So first of all, we've got a place to set our spawn. We've got a little balcony here and then when you drop down into this area, ooh, it really kind of like opens up with the details, right? So we got the enchanting area, we got our storage, and I wanted this to look, you know, variated and uh, sort of semi-organic, I guess. So I've thrown in some blocks next to the barrels to represent what's going to be inside of them. And this will continue to evolve as we go along here. Uh, the best thing in this room though, apart from all the tiny little details that you can probably spot, like throwing in the occasional different texture, this bit was so much fun to put together. And you'll notice that these blocks are directly above the chest. We can't actually open these ones and that's fine. I just thought it looked nice like that. So then we've got all of these ones down here to use and this is where I'm storing the valuables. And heading down this ladder has just made me realise I want to hook this up to that same room. Our way to get down to the bottom to do our mining. Anyway, the reason I'm coming in this direction is because there's actually like an amethyst geode pretty much directly below where I've been working on that room. And this is the one that I showed you in our very first episode. We harvested some calcite and smooth basalt from here. And when I came back to it, like there are just crystals all over this thing. And where I've mined out the blocks below, they're even down here now as well. And when we break them, you can see that we get these. If we break them with silk touch, we actually get the crystal itself, which is what I used in the room. I love how musical these blocks are. That is such a cool little feature. So in terms of farming this, like I don't really have any ideas for automation, maybe something with pistons in the future. But for now, it's obviously a good idea just to come and expose all of these ones. These are the budding amethysts, and they will naturally just grow those crystals on all sides, so it makes sense to kind of rip out all the blocks around them. And this is what it looks like when you've done that. And I didn't bring a bucket of water with me, so Mini-Me's going to get a little chance to uh, roam around out of the water. I was thinking maybe instead of pistons, water flows might pop these off. Well, that's, that's a great start. No, water doesn't pop them off. Well, okay, that's the end of that idea. Yeah, mini, 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 me. Oh, jeez, you dodged it. One thing that's becoming apparent rather quickly is that actually harvesting this stuff manually is kind of a pain in the bum. So automating this is definitely something that needs to happen at some point. For now, though, someone else has occupied the boat, and I'm okay with this. I've also finished doing the upper floor of this area now, just put in a few beams, some flower pots, a painting... The details go a long way and down in this room let's talk about this I'm probably gonna have a bridge that goes across to that island and then we're gonna put a building or two over there but on the side here, you might have noticed we've got some water streams this is to get up and down to the bottom and so down here I can do my branch mining and whatnot and if we go off in this direction and around the corner this leads us to the geode and because I've been working on all that other stuff you can see the crystals are now forming on all sides of the blocks so once you've ripped out all the other ones, this place becomes far more productive. 
And then in the opposite direction, I've been working on something I'm excited to show you. And excited might have been too strong of a word. I'm excited to get geared up. And this is going to be a key part of it. So if we break out these blocks here, these are ready to be replaced with tinted glass. It's a good thing we got on top of that amethyst geode. And yes, as you might have guessed, it's a skeleton farm, all set up and ready to go. So down the bottom here, we have the water stream to bring the skeletons over to a soul sand block, which they'll then get shuffled up above. They go all the way to the top there, and then they fall down to where there'll be one hit kill. So I need to put like a hopper here. Obviously, I need to decorate this room, and I want to get some tinted glass. So I hereby declare this the mining desert. And I've come here with no wood, no sticks, got some iron ingots to make a shovel. Luckily, you can get sticks here, and clearly, someone's here, been here before. And I forgot what the recipe was, and I thought it was like four glass and one of these shards for two tinted glass. So, I, you know, I probably already had what I needed back at my base. Well, if we need sand in the future, I've dug out this nether tunnel to get there. I've also dug one to the mesa and to a swamp as well. And this thing, by the way, isn't very far away from where we are. This is my portal. So we are back where we need to be, and I am dead excited to use this tinted glass. This is one of the coolest things in this update. And also, if ever you're doing something like this, okay, here's the trick. A few blocks out in each of the corners, just put individual blocks with torches on. That'll stop all of them spawning. Then when you need to take them away, make sure that you've got, like, a secure spot like this. Because I'm going to get shot, and if I didn't have blocks on either side of me, that could potentially send me down into the water, which we don't want. And nothing has spawned, so hey, we did that, no problems whatsoever. And look at that, it's pitch black in there. I love this tinted glass, although it is kind of like staring into the abyss. And here they are, our first skeletons. The reason I got a carpet on top of this hopper is because the XP can end up inside of the hopper if we don't do that, which we don't want. And speaking of XP, you might have noticed that I don't have a lot of it. When I was setting up those elevators to get up and down, I actually died twice and I had 33 levels of experience. So painful, I know. Because what we're going to do now is use this to get some experience points, do some enchanting, finally get some good things together. And while we do that, we are going to decorate this area here, of course. But I have got my 33 levels of experience back, which is just fantastic. We're ready to do some enchanting. And the last time that I mined diamonds, <laughs> I had three of them, and I got three diamonds, even though I was using my fortune pick. So we're doing this one on camera, right? We're going to get more than three diamonds, surely. 42 diamonds, my friends. This is going to go a long way towards gearing me up. And do you know what else is going to help us? Our villagers. I've actually done a lot of work down here. This is a little bit of a hint. <laughs> I brought some decorative blocks in just to make it feel more cozy while I'm in the area. And I, I love how this turned out. There's all sorts of details, like putting these in the ground and doing stuff with slabs and stairs and walls. And it just makes this area kind of come to life. There is also now this second corridor here with, like, villagers to trade with everywhere. We have got on so many good trades. Impaling and breaking. That's one of the ones that I want to get. They are kind of expensive, so we need to work on lowering the price of these trades and also getting more emeralds. Because this is kind of slow and this is all I've got. So I've been using the paper, the potatoes, and the carrots, but this only gets us so far. The trade that I think we need to take advantage of is this pumpkin one right here. Last season, at the beginning of the season, I built a relatively easy to build automatic pumpkin farm, and I think we might end up building that again. Oh, and this guy just unlocked Unbreaking Free, and it's cheaper. That's good to see. Oh, and if you're wondering, these are all of the trades that I've got on, so I make one trade to keep the villager... To hold those and then I put it in here and now I've got an idea of all the stuff that I've got. And look at me my friends, I am covered in diamonds. This went swimmingly well, we've got a bunch of really decent enchantments here. Not the best of everything and I've still got a little more to do so I'm going to take a trip back and get a couple more of these books. But I've got emeralds to spare so I can really buff up all of these items. And this here is the janky entrance by the way to our enchanting area which has got a real nice vibe to it. I love this bit here though with the tinted glass. It didn't actually need to be tinted. I put a light source on the other side. So anyway, now you'll see the skeletons whooshing up and then you'll see them landing down the front here. And possibly I'll rearrange and change some of this stuff because as you'll see, the walls are pretty flat and bland. And later on I want to make things look more interesting, but it's kind of awkward to cart around lots of detail blocks, right? 
This is where shulker boxes would become useful to bring things to a place and pick out the ones that you want to use. But also to cart stuff away as well. We've got this junk chest that's probably going to be left here for a while. Oh, and here is a big pro tip. Do not forget about the grindstone, okay? You can get a little bit of extra XP from stuff that drops from the skeletons. But most importantly, you can put your, you know, your own gear into there and take it back. And I got a couple of dud enchantments on my boots, right? Because I was after the feather falling. So I just re-enchanted them. And then eventually I got feather falling, which was awesome. So I was thinking, let's do this. Let's go to the end dimension. But I know me. I really need to think things through a little bit more. I had this idea that we would simply grab some obsidian and then make some ender chests, right? Of course, there is one other ingredient we need besides ender pearls, which I actually have a few of. And if we go to the end dimension, they should be pretty easy to collect some more. And that other ingredient can be found out here in the nether where everything is trying to kill me. We need to get over there to the blaze spawner. I'm just going to hop across this perfectly safe looking dirt pathway here. Nothing wrong with this. Whoever was here before didn't exactly like set up much of a farm. So I think I'm just going to quickly make a little wimpy setup. So this is the farm right here. You create these little trenches underneath the spawners so that the blaze is just going to fall down on top of them. And then you give them a whack. And then you collect the blaze rods. They can't shoot at you. That's the cool thing about it. But I'm kind of not prepared to do the whole thing right now because this thing's kind of skinny and that means that as I expand it I actually need to build out over the top of this lava like out to the side I need to remove all the wood and so I think I'll save doing that for like a live stream you can catch my live streams on Twitch be sure to go check it out and hit the follow button and get notified of when I go live um, I would have probably done this before the episode comes out though but look at this 49 blaze rods let's get a couple more and then get out of here and getting out of here will be fun because as I walk across here, something might shoot me from behind. No, seems I'm good today. Now, my friends, we can get organized and this is starting to feel more like it was last season. I love it when we get our ender chest full of shulker boxes. And just to begin with, I put all of my useful tools and things and I've switched over to using my silk touch as our main one. So the ender chest becomes like a backup. And of course, we got additional tools, additional ender chests, and all sorts in here. Key thing though, I brought with me some paper and gunpowder. I am prepared for getting our hands on an elytra today so that we can fly. This is, however, all the gunpowder that I have collected. I don't have a farm, so I'm going to have to use them sparingly when I get my hands on them. Oh, suddenly a Wells Knight appears, covered in netherite armor. That's a grind we'll do soon, because of course it only takes one piece of netherite to upgrade each piece of armor and tool. Anyway, the hard stuff has been done here for us. Here come the silverfish. Why can't I hit them? Am I, am I just terrible at aiming all of a sudden? Yeah, look at this. Someone already hooked up the end portal so we don't have to grind out the ender pearls. We can just hop straight in. And somewhere in here, there is a like cheap poor man's enderman farm with no three ender pearls. Oh, wow. Well, I was going to stand here for a minute, but I think I'll just take a couple of these. But yeah, the idea is that the Endermen can't get inside, so you can look at them. They'll come over here and then you can whack them. And I think the Ender Dragon has only been defeated once. So there's one of these end portals over here. Now, other people have been to this dimension, and I guess that what they're probably going to do is go in, you know, these sorts of directions. And what I want to do is go in the opposite direction in order to find end cities that haven't been raided. Okay, so off to exploring it is. I'm guessing this is going to take a fair amount of time as I'm going to have to wander around for a while. One of the things I did this season though is I pre-generated an absolute massive 10,000 block area in the end dimension so that when we come and explore out here, like the server won't be generating chunks because a lot of that happens early game. So by these things already being pre-generated, the server performance kind of, you know, keeps up. I saw it just before I threw an ender pearl. That's our first end city. Awesome. And I think I made a smart decision to travel round the side in a direction it's likely no one else has gone because, yeah, it doesn't look like anyone else has been here. Now, on every previous season of Hermitcraft, we've always had the shulker loot table adjusted so that you always get two shulker shells each and every time. This season, we're not doing that because of the potential to automatically farm these, so... It'll take me a little longer to get my uh, my shulker boxes together. 
Wow, that one dropped literally nothing. That sucks. And when you're floating up and you want to go down, use a water bucket, my friends. That's the way. So here is the loot from our first end city. It was a small one. And I've just found a second one right next door. The problem with this one is there is a bridge. Someone has come here and possibly just taken the elytra. And it kind of looks like they actually came here and properly raided this one as well. So I'm going to pinch some end rods and then head out of here. So this is not a good sign. I'm now heading north to try and get around to the area that's furthest away from the end portal. And clearly someone else has been here before. Well, this is a good sign. I feel like I'm following in someone else's footsteps, but it doesn't look like they've gone over here. So we might get our wings. This is always the worst bit. I say that though, if the shulker shoots us, it's going to send us up into the sky and we're just going to plop ourselves down on top of this thing. Yeah, that'll actually help me get up there. Come on. Okay, let's fly. Let's do this. Let's get some wings. And there it is, my friends. Do you know what I should have brought? I should have brought like a mending and unbreaking book to begin with, but this will do this for now. There we go. Absolute game changer and we've got it. I almost forgot it. <laughs> the dragon head. Yeah. We've got to take that with us. And now, let's fly for the first time. Awesome. And I've flown my way straight over to another one. So today we'll get a backup elytra as well. This is awesome. So things got a little bit hairy flying across the void with all that darkness. I was using the 30-30 method to fly without rockets. And then we found an enderman farm on the way back. So that's been built on the server already. And with the XP from that, I have uh, upgraded our wings with mending and unbreaking. And I was thinking, you know, maybe I should have skipped this whole getting diamonds part because you get tons of diamond gear when you're in the end. So if you roll the dice and go in there with iron, you walk out with like tons of fantastic enchantments, tools as well. I could have saved myself a lot of time by just going straight there. We also picked up a whole bunch of diamonds from the chests too. And while I was out there in the end dimension, things have been happening back here at the base. Not things that I've been doing. Something has turned up that, well, it probably won't make a lot of sense because I don't even know who did this. But over here, there are dripstone blocks and path blocks. And what's interesting about this is that the path itself kind of leads down to this boat that I wander down to to get over to our other places. And it leads over here to where I'm actually going to be building next. And I was thinking, this is kind of a good fit for the environment. When we get to shaping the area around the deep slate, the dripstone, you know, it's dangerous. It's kind of rocky. It probably suits this place pretty well. But anyway, how about that build, right, that we're going to put over here that I just mentioned? Well, it's going to be the biggest build that we've done so far. Although we've only done two other builds, right? But I'm trying to do one every episode. And this is the spot in which I'm going to build it. We're going to jump into that with some music and then I'll talk about it after it's finished. It's time to do something I haven't really done this season so far, and that is to swoop down and check out the build from behind me. That's right, it's a lighthouse. I kind of felt like that's what this island needed, and then I thought it would be a challenge to incorporate some of the deep slate blocks and some of the new ones there with the calisite as well. And you know what, it's ended up looking gorgeous. I have, however, ran out of some building blocks just to finish off the roof. And fun story for you, I was mining the deep slate with my silk touch pick and I actually picked out like 12 stacks of 
Deep Slate, here it is, before I realised that what I needed was the cobbled Deep Slate. So I'm going to whiz up there, sparingly using our rockets, because we don't have the farms to produce more rockets just yet. So the roof is now finished, and we have a fantastical lighthouse here. And I built one of these in the past in Season 4, and I wanted to use it as a frame of reference. So I went to YouTube, searched up Hermitcraft Lighthouse, and found like five or six different designs that have been used over the seasons. Uh, I think Vintage Beef built one, and so did Corallus. And this one is actually based off of Full Symmetry's one in Season 5, I think. So I literally just used her thumbnail as like the inspiration for this. It's probably quite similar. I do believe it's a fair bit bigger, both in width and height. So this path, it sort of leads up in this direction. And eventually we will hook this area up with paths and whatnot. But the interior of this, I think, is going to be the map room. So when you come in here, I'm thinking like maybe a spiral staircase and then in the middle is where we put all of our maps and then if we need to expand maybe that spiral staircase could go down underground as well and it makes sense because the lighthouse looks out around the area and so it kind of ties with the theme of this map which is going to evolve over time and I guess when we update this next you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff on this area so I have a clip to leave you with from a live stream at the end of this video. But first of all, did you know that dripstone could generate in swamps like this? I didn't know they could, and I thought it was kind of interesting. And also, earlier in this episode, you may remember that we hopped into the Never to get some blaze rods. And I've actually finished turning that into a basic and safe blaze rod farm for the other players here on the server. But it was, you know, when working on that that I got chased by a bunch of pigmen out of the nether and yeah, then this happened. So I want to say a massive thank you for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and enjoy this little clip here at the end. Bye bye. Oh god, it just spawned right there. Like... Oh, that's really bad. Oh, do you know what's worse? Whew. Whew. Oh, that's the Pikmin! The Pikmin have landed! <laughs>